School-related violence in all its forms is an infringement of children's and adolescents' rights to education and to health and well-being. No country can achieve inclusive and equitable quality education for all if learners experience violence and bullying in school. And that's a direct quote from UNICEF. When parents and guardians send their children to schools like these, either boarding or day schools, they expect that school authorities will take over as loco parentis. It is worrisome from the reports I get that some end up committing suicide while some kill each other due to bullying. Parents should play their role in telling their children not to participate in bullying others. That was said by E.D. Winangagwa, the president of the Republic of Zimbabwe. He further said and spoke out against bullying and the use of drugs among the youth at the inaugural E.D. Munangagwa Business Summit. We have had several cases now of bullying in the schools, both day schools as well as boarding schools. You as parents would want you to educate and counsel our children to respect each other. We have cases where kids have lost their lives in the process of bullying at school. Zimbabwe has recorded a worrying increase in cases of bullying, some of which have tragically resulted in learners taking their own lives, while others have dropped out from school completely. Jaden Sorden from Hamilton High. Does this name ring a bell? Well, not to many, but to his family, he was just a sweet young boy with a bright future ahead of him. Jaden committed suicide by drinking pesticide, allegedly after complaining of being bullied at school. Wayne and Lovu, Founders High School. Another young boy lost his life after being stabbed by another learner in a school gang fight. And this is just a tip of the iceberg. Losing a loved one is never easy. Parents of school children who commit suicide have to deal with this unending pain for the rest of their lives. What about friends, classmates and the community? In Zimbabwe, cases of school children taking their own lives are spiralling out of control and one of the main causes of suicide among teenagers in the country is bullying. Diplomatic Passport had to investigate. My first port of call was the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education. The ministry is responsible for our kids when they are in schools and surely should be able to explain what is happening. I talked to Dr. Taungana Indoro. Bullying in schools is not tolerated at all in all our schools. All schools that provide primary and secondary education do not tolerate bullying. Bullying has been an ancient tradition, especially in boarding schools, usually veiled as an initiation ceremony for newcomers, normally Form 1s and Form 5s. But what is bullying and what acts constitute bullying? Well, let me give you a definition. Bullying is a long-standing violence, physical or psychological, conducted by an individual or group and directed against an individual who is not able to defend himself or herself in the actual situation with a conscious desire to hurt, threaten or frighten that individual or put them under stress. When we define bullying from a psychological perspective, we are saying uh, there's someone who is inflicting pain uh, on an individual. The pain can be emotional, psychological, or even physical. So they make use of threats to frighten or even to threaten the, the victim. One learner may take food from another learner uh, by force without actually talking to them or by threatening them. Or they can beat up another learner. That is also another form of uh, bullying. One thing is for sure. Most bullying is being done by school pupils in and out of school grounds and in school uniform. As we have shown earlier, some of these bullying scenes have turned fatal. Despite the policies that the ministry says are in place to curtail bullying incidents, why is bullying on the increase? The blue air bullying, uh, the one that uh, in which we lost uh, one of our pupils from Founders High School, um, that happened outside our school, um, where in, uh, one of the pupils was stabbed uh, with a knife uh, on the neck and the jugular um, uh, vein uh, 
really, it, it takes almost about five minutes for someone to bleed out. Um, that happened outside our school. And this has to do with the uh, rivalry between two schools, Hamilton and Founders High. And, but what happens is that at our school and within the school premises, that sort of bullying does not take place because all our pupils and all, all our parents and guardians are aware that the school environment is a safe environment because we have got the senior teachers, we've got the senior masters, we've got the deputy heads and the heads who are there to control, including the prefects, to control this uh, scourge of bullying. There are a number of factors that uh, contribute to issues of bullying. Uh, we look at the family factors, environmental factors, factors in the child. So looking at the family, we are saying some families, they are dysfunctional. There's a lot of violence in the home, uh, disorder in the home. There are no rules. There's no one who's in control in the room, in the home. So at the end, the child feels like what is happening at home is exactly what I should be doing outside. So when they are in school, they try to find um, peace and comfort in peers. So as a way of um, getting the peace and comfort, they use the threats. They use violence so that they get the attention from their peers. Is called a zone case of violence and was looking after them, Titovan, Ubella, Mapolis, Ayo, Akanila, Antona, Kumbel, is called a sort of Teto Tuntona, and Vela, a coach's school of Namponani, Avantana Vasa, Savo, Osa Vela, Chaum, Opera, a sign of school, Vasa Fund, which I mean, Nina Chaum, Tona, Nizan, is a coach's school of Namponan, Teto, and Lama Polisa, Ami, and Natis, Avantana. Recently, we have also seen an upsurge in the intake of uh, drugs by learners. And because they are no longer in control of themselves or under the influence of drugs, they end up doing all sorts of things, including bullying. Would you even believe it when I tell you there are now rival school gangs where pupils from one school arrange a fight with pupils from another school and fight outside in the streets, outside school premises? The government acknowledges the presence of such gangs in both Bulawayo and Harare, as well as throughout the country. But it says this normally happens off or outside school property. The issue of them being in school uniform, that's when it then comes to relate to us. But if you take these boys in their casual clothes, you think they're someone else. They're probably uh, some touts or whoever. Because now, because they're in school uniform, you then come to the ministry to say, what is going on? Parents and other stakeholders acknowledge they spend less time with their kids these days, but say the government should not be shifting or shirking their responsibilities. I spoke to the representative of parents, the Schools Development Association's the committee secretary general, Evaristo Jongwe. This is not about shifting responsibility. Because with the same token, we can still also say uh, during normal working days uh, when, when bullying is done in schools, they're not our responsibility. But no, we are not saying that. Bullying has very negative consequences for the victim, even for the perpetrator. The emotional scars for both victims and bystanders can last a lifetime. Learners who are repeatedly victimized resort to drastic means to escape, including, unfortunately, suicide. Well, on the victim, it affects them in a number of ways. Uh, it affects them psychologically, uh, physically, and mentally. So psychologically, we will see that this victim is exposed to high stress levels. They are depressed they will lose their confidence, they will lose interest in everything that they might do. Or it can be that this victim can then uh, also retaliate 
uh, in an effort to show that they also have got some power within them. They also can dominate in other spheres. And then physically, we can see that some children are, will end up sustaining physical, physical injuries uh, because some of the bullying can uh, come in form of fights, like physical fighting, punching, uh, using use of objects to inflict pain on, a, on an individual. So we end up having my physical injuries on, on the victim. And some can even end up uh, having physical disabilities as a result of bullying. When the bullying becomes so severe, uh, they will face the law. If schools do not tolerate bullying, why is bullying still happening? Are the school authorities doing enough? Charles Mubandarikwa, the PTUZ Harare province chair, is a teacher in Highfield Harare with more than a dozen years of experience. He acknowledges that teachers have an important role to play in fighting bullying, but there are other factors that need to be addressed to end bullying. In the class sizes, they are also contributing. You have a teacher with 70 learners and uh, ensuring that you are aware of uh, the behaviour of each and every learner is difficult. There are some stakeholders who I met during the course of my investigation and believe in the old adage, spare the rod, spoil the child. To this group, the rising cases of bullying are caused by the removal or ban of corporal punishment. Zimbabwe's High Court outlawed corporal punishment a few years ago for children both at school and in the home. Justice David Mangoto agreed that corporal punishment for children was unconstitutional and said that parents and teachers should not lay their hands on children even if they misbehave. But what could be the other solutions to instill discipline in these children? Expulsion? I think the removal of corporal punishment in schools was ill-timed. And I think as Zimbabweans, we don't have uh, or better alternatives. I am saying so because in some societies, uh, they withdraw certain privileges to the learners as a way of punishing them. But uh, in our society, what can you possibly withdraw? You can't say we are stopping you from having uh, your internet bundle when they don't have, even have a phone. So there's nothing to withdraw. You can't say you are not going to watch this or that because they, there's no television at home. <laughs> Currently, the education system uh, has got the exclusion, I mean, they are excluded from the school, but we still give it opportunity to go and look for a place elsewhere. They are a difficult child, so we transfer the child and the problem to the next school. That's the strategy. Unfortunately, that's not solving the problem. And this next one, expelling. Now, uh, when you're talking like that, and I was smiling, I was thinking, is this not equivalent to death sentence? Expelling children is not the solution. But what then should the school administration do? After all has been said and done, bullying needs to be stopped, and it needs to be stopped now. Action is needed to end bullying in schools, and the government should be at the forefront of this. We need a multi-sectoral approach, wherein members of the community, community leaders, councillors, members of parliament, parents, guardians, and other stakeholders come together wherever they witness bullying outside schooling, school premises, they intervene. They intervene and they stop it immediately. We also need the community to come in. The police say they have long decided not to appear heavy-handed when it comes to bullying, but maybe it's high time they need to get more involved. But the Royal Police spokesperson, Inspector, thinks searching people's bags for weapons and drugs should be a priority beginning now and believes this should be done by parents and teachers. We strongly feel as Zimbabwe Bible Police that if teachers can uh, search the searchers of their students, 
it will be better than every time bringing uh, uniformed police officers by the gates or by the classrooms searching school children. Maybe that is that will be maybe sort of a, a heavy hand. But we want to work with the teachers searching, instilling discipline. Then we, we, we come in to deal with the crime. The prefects to be given permission by the school to search bags of students maybe let's say once a month or every friday since we know that fights usually okay on fridays searching the bags maybe because there are some students who bring drugs but will not be sure alcohol or weapons like knives or cups so searching might help and then confiscate those illegal weapons but we also must create a framework legally through an act of parliament either the Education Act itself, which must bar bullying or bar antisocial behavior in schools and make it punishable in some way. And that way, we can then have the judicial system enforcing that kind of thing. And at the same time, we must probably get even the issue of the law uh, enforcement agents within school premises. Because as we go in now, children are coming to school carrying dangerous instruments, carrying dangerous uh, weapons, knives. Government should work towards formulating laws and policies that protect school children from harassment and bullying. The ministry insists they have clear policies and laws against bullying and programs such as guidance and counselling are in place. Our teachers are well, well trained. They are very well trained in guidance and, and counselling. We actually have a hierarchy of who is the best guidance and counsellor at any school. Guidance and counselling in schools, check. Guidance and counselling is important and most of the people I talk to agree. But how effective is it? Does the ministry have competent counsellors? Guidance and counselling in schools is a very good programme uh, which, which must continue happening in all schools. What needs to be done uh, differently is just to strengthen the guidance and counselling, refresher training sessions for the guidance and, guidance and counselling teachers, uh, refresher in terms of how to manage bullying if, if it happens, having the basic counselling skills, the counselling knowledge to intervene and to help, and as well um, having a school-based counsellor. The guidance and counselling in our schools is erratic erratic in the sense that we have not sufficiently equipped every teacher to be a counsellor, sufficiently equipped the school to have specialised psychologists who are resident at the school, uh, even if they are trained both in psychology and nursing and mental health uh, help, we don't have that. Awareness matters and is critical to ending bullying. Students and parents should be educated about bullying and provided with the means of seeking help. Children are likely to flourish when parents and guardians nurture them, offer them strategies to help them regulate their feelings. Educate the learners, educate the, 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 the children in the schools about the dangers of bullying, how it will affect their life, how it will affect the relationships around them. I want to talk about my banners, my placards, my posters. What do I mean by this? During the AIDS pandemic, that's the time that I was growing, I, I, I used to see kama shops. There was just a lot of things that was conscientizing me about HIV and AIDS as I was growing. Even during, during the COVID pandemic, I think we saw that. Because everywhere you would turn, it was just written, mask up, mask up. Uh, I want to go with what the pastor says. So if I were to see everywhere, I go, pastor on a drug and substance abuse, pastor on a bullying, I think it would instill something in my brain. I will know where to step and where not to step, which way to go and which way not to fall. The community matters too and needs to play its part to end bullying in and out of schools. When parents and teachers work together, big difference can be made in children's lives. Charity begins at home. The teacher is not the one who's supposed to teach a child to say thank you, to say sorry, to say please. These are basics and these are the things that we ask parents and guardians to instill in their children before they come to our schools. We will then buttress that 
with a lot of other education to make sure that we have a full-grown male, a full-grown female who is uh, well-rounded, well-mannered, who is a gentleman or who is a lady who can get into society and make a difference. Some of the bullying happens between the school and the home, right? That is where society plays a very big role. Uh, to give an example of our past, when moral standards were held high, we used to say it takes a village to bring up a child. The parents are to play their roles, uh, teachers are to play their role, and the community at large. Our community is no longer as strong as it was before. Uh, you know, there was a time when I was uh, a school go uh, uh, when I was going to school. Uh, we used to be reprimanded by any adult, and we used to respect them. This has totally changed. Now you have people who live next to each other. They don't even know each other's name. As parents, we, 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 we need to look at scenarios where we don't say, this is my child. We also we need to say, these are our children. We need to guide every other child we see in school uniform. The deceased Wayne and Lovo's father aptly sums up what every parent needs to do. I really want to say to all parents out there, think about this seriously. Tomorrow it could be your child. And if you fail, uh, things will just turn into something really terrible. So ask Let's appreciate what is from from the mistakes. This has been a very difficult episode for me. At some point during the investigation, I did shed a tear. What's becoming of our society, especially to our teenagers in schools? Look, bullying is a scourge that needs to be wiped out in our schools and society at large. A multi-stakeholder approach to bullying involving the students, teachers, parents, government, police, civil society, and the religious sector is the way to go. And this is now urgent. The drug pandemic also needs to be dealt with swiftly. The police should make sure drug laws are nowhere near our schools. Schools are supposed to be safe spaces for our kids. Time to act in now before we lose many bright minds to the bullying pandemic. Pandemic, I said, yes, because it really is becoming a pandemic. We are losing future leaders of the corporate world, pilots, teachers, doctors, nurses. The list goes on. Bullying has to stop. And it has to stop today. Before a child even comes to ECD, they should understand that bullying is wrong. Even when they are uh, two years old and they are with other children and you see one other child beating another child, as a parent you are supposed to actually start the control from there. Everyone is a potential perpetrator of bullying. Everyone is a potential victim of bullying. We just need to ensure that whatever that we are doing, is it not causing harm to the next person? They should pack books and pens. Parents, please, let's ensure this. Not bottles of two keys, screwdrivers, scissors, ama okapi.